It's that time of year. We're in the deep of winter and the seasons have changed and the natural energy around us is changing too. But are you in harmony with winter or are you working against the natural cycle of things? Let's find out. Health Explorer Neil Fellows here. And if you want to get healthy and fit and stay healthy and fit and do it in a way that's natural and unique to you as an individual, then please subscribe and hit the bell. In this video, we're talking about the energy of winter and the natural rhythms that you can work with to improve your health. Joining me is author, radio and TV presenter, Dawn Breslin. So Dawn, we've already talked this year about summer and autumn energy, and we're now heading into winter. Tell us about how energy changes as we go from autumn into winter, and then the main themes that we should be looking out for. Yeah, so this is it's an interesting time. I think for a lot of people, winter just feels, you know, you hear this, people going through sad and feeling down, feeling low. It kind of feels like this barren time. Um, you know, and I noticed I was dancing last night and uh, when I was dancing, my energy wasn't quite so high. And I think as humans, you know, we, we want to kind of be in this sunny, uh, joyful, abundant phase all the time. I think we're, pro we're kind of programmed into um, thinking that that's where we need to be. We need to be in joy. We need to be in abundance. We need to be in overflow. And, you know, the reality is that for any living organism on this planet to really thrive and to thrive sustainably, it goes through a process of growth and then rest and then repair. And then from there, it goes back in to growth again. So if we look at the trees, we look at the plants, flowers, baby hedgehogs, you know, animals growing, they're all going through these cycles of energy up. And if you look at in and out breath, it's kind of like in breath and then whoa, let go out breath. So energy high, external, and then whoa, rest and slow down. And when we come to winter, we're in this natural, slow rhythm. You know, I've noticed in the mornings, I've gone from getting up at six in the morning to getting up at eight in the morning. And part of me whips myself for it because it's like, I should be up really, really early. But naturally, the body is following the rhythms, the natural rhythms of sunlight, you know, and darkness. And there is a natural pace. Um, a natural rhythm to life mm. but for most of us you know we stick on big lights we um, are wired in we are you know hermetically sealed in from the outdoors in our offices and our houses and we're not connecting with those rhythms and as a result you know when we're trying to stay perpetually in on state or high energy state or optimized state the body over a period of time will um will start to uh give us a feedback give us feedback that that doesn't work for us mm. so we've got this world of natural rhythms we're surrounded by them externally we're surrounded by them through the seasons you know so seasonally we're going through changes and this season that we're coming into is winter this is the slowest um, of the four seasons it's the one where if we're attuned to it it's where we're most reflective most intuitive it's where the veil between the conscious and the subconscious mind you know in summer there's no space for reflection because everything's kind of on and energetic and buzzy and you know you're kind of moving at pace and then autumn we're slowing down in winter this is this is the time to step back, to naturally review, naturally reflect, naturally take time to look at, again, two of the very um, fundamental, uh, what would we call them, um, states in life, is that certain things are growing and they're, they're, they're coming through these beginning phases and then there's other things that are naturally ending. And if we try to be in a state of perpetual beginnings and growth, um, 
And we never give in to what's ending. For so many of us, we just become stagnant. You know, whether that's in relationships, whether it's in work projects, if it's in our careers, um, even things like exercise routines, sometimes, you know, things just become outdated for us. They, they don't appeal to us anymore. They don't inspire us anymore. And in this period of winter, you know, we have an opportunity to review and slow down and ask ourselves, what's working for me and what's not working for me? You know, and I think it's just a really natural, I think the other thing is I'm very aware of around this time of year, you know, once I get beyond um, once I get beyond autumn, I notice naturally all the journals and things start to appear on my desk. It's, it's like, what am I doing throughout the winter period? And, and it's just, it's quite natural for me at that time to start that review process. And I think as we slow down, as the distraction is taken away, you know, everything's veiled in darkness and all we have is what's in front of us or what's coming up from within us. It's quite natural at that time to start thinking, um, where am I? Where am I going? Where have I been? You know, and I think this year has been an interesting year. Uh, I think this has been a long winter. I think for a lot of people, it's we've not been able to get away from what's rising. I found myself in psychotherapy this year, you know, after mm -hmm. 25 years in personal development, it's like suddenly I'm, I, I couldn't get away from, you know, it was childhood grief that was starting to come up. Mm -hmm. I had nowhere to run from it. So up it came. So in that kind of slowing down period without distraction, things start to bubble to the surface. So I think a lot of people think winter is this kind of um, futile period. When I think in, in um, reality, it's almost like in winter, you know, we clear up the garden, we put everything in a compost heap, and we think that the compost heap is where everything is dead. But if we take that same metaphor into our lives, if we kind of look at what hasn't worked out and we put it in a big pile, it becomes the dirty, smelly, stinky compost that begins to create the fertile environment for new sprouts to begin to grow. Mm. So in our ending phases, in our winter phases, I think it looks like on the surface nothing's happening. But I think, and I think, I think we don't understand this fully right now, where when the mind relaxes, when we start to slow down, the incredible healing and repair that's actually taking place, mm -hmm. and how in the empty space, new beginnings have an opportunity to seed and to start to, to grow. Because what follows winter is spring. Yeah. And spring is the new beginnings and this fertile energy starts to rise again. But winter feeds that energy mm -hmm. if we slow down, if we actually start to tune in to our natural rhythms, if we live and work at a natural pace instead of this artificial pace that so many of us live with it. Yeah. Using the compost analogy, just thinking like what we're talking about reflecting at the end of the year that reflection really in a way becomes the compost becomes the fertile ground for moving forward in the new year because if you realize what's not working for you and what is working for you and what you want to do more of what you want to do less of it can you know really move you forward in, in the next year dawn you mentioned um a long winter so i want to just pick up on that because um usually when we think of seasonal cycles we think of them being very chronological uh, in their order um, but do they always happen in that way um no <laughs> <laughs> so we can have winters uh winter phases so metaphorically we can have winter phases in our lives that last years you know we can have winter difficult times barren times arid times that can last for months and months and months, you know, at the end of a relationship, when we're grieving, when we're going through an illness, you know, whatever it is that's coming up for us, we can go into that, that phase where maybe we're not so active or where emotionally we feel, you know, we're weighed down. And I remember, um, I remember actually 
I had this, I remember planting this uh, rose bush in my garden. And I just thought that the rose bush was dead and it, there was nothing happening with this rose bush. And um, it, took it, it took three to four years for this rose bush to come into its full bloom. And, and when it did, it was, it was crazy. It had all these pink roses all over it. And it came out of nowhere. And it, it was almost like it had this big, long period where it was gathering its strength where beneath the surface so much was going on. And you see it in relationship breakups. You see it, you know, with people who are grieving. I see it, you know, where people think, I'm never going to come out of this phase. But, you know, the clock, the clock takes cycles turn and people do eventually come through. I personally went into a big, long winter phase. I remember when I burned out, I couldn't work. I'd lost my identity for, you know, this is when I started to discover this harmonizing process because I was so burned out that I didn't know how I was ever going to work again. And um, it took me about two and a half, three years before I could work again. I was so adrenally fatigued um, and exhausted. And what was amazing was, and I remember spending so much time in the garden where I started to look to nature to try and, I, I was drawn intuitively to nature to try and work out how does nature endure storms? You know, what happens when things break in nature? How do they recover? And the answer is they recover gently. But, you know, in my two, three year recovery, where I started to follow the cycles, I started to live in tune with the natural rhythms and i restored my energy my vitality my vision in that empty space i remember getting inspired to write this story and the story became a film and then there were a whole series of coincidences that happened in my life and as a bbc screenplay writer actually wrote the film up into a screenplay and if i hadn't had that barren winter that empty time you know in the emptiness sometimes we have the space for new ideas to emerge if we live plugged in constantly to and, and I used to do it you know where I had my plan I had my vision I had my five-year plan I knew exactly what I was doing I had my daily routine of work and there was no space for anything there was space for the plan I made in my mind. And my whole intuitive being, my, the serendipity that happens when we have empty space, there was just no room for any of that. So sometimes in winters, in these kind of really empty, what appear to be really empty spaces that you could not imagine anything happening in them because you're ill, you're sick, you're... You're, you know, whatever's going on. I think there's a, a much deeper level. Profound things can take place and do take place. I think on a soul level, you know, the expansion that we go through when we step into that emptiness, especially the emptiness with adversity, is massive. So I often teach this. It's like it looks like on the surface you're not doing anything, but on a soul level, on a um, on a more profound level, you're being expanded, your resilience might be, even although you might think you're stuck, your resilience to cope with things that you've never coped with before is being grown. So yeah, the coldness of winters, the endings, the difficult phases, the phases when the sun is not constantly shining, they can be just really profound phases. And I've learned to live rhythmically now in my life. I live very, very rhythmically. I, I actually, this morning I was out in the garden and it was cold, but I had my bare feet on the grass in the garden. It's like, I'm not even, I'm not even just looking out the window and seeing the seasons. I want to feel the cold. I want to feel earth. I want to feel nature move through my body. I swim in the sea. I swim in lochs at different times of the year. And I'm feeling nature. I walk through the woods and I see the changes. And it's almost like the energetic imprint of that experience stays with me and keeps me, keeps me connected to where I really am in my growth cycle, you know. And I will go through long periods that are winters because it's inevitable in life that we're going to go through adversity and difficulty. And even at summer times, you're going to feel miserable. That's going to happen from time to time. But when we get back into balance, get back into alignment, 
you know, to actually live cyclically, cyclically, it's it's just such a sustainable and energizing way to live. So you slow down in the winter, you slow down in the autumn, but you know that the minute spring comes, your energy, boom, you're being prepared for what's coming next. And you learn to trust those cycles instead of thinking, I've got to get everything done now, even though it's winter, even though I'm exhausted. And you're kind of working against your natural rhythms, which means that your productivity is often affected because um, you're trying to do things that, don't feel right and that maybe just aren't quite in flow mm, yeah makes sense dawn um what would um be one thing that people could take away from the conversation that we're, we're having um, and try yeah so i really love this idea of um you know becoming really attuned to uh, to avoid stagnation you know and and when you avoid stagnation you increase your energy, your vitality, your passion for life. So I would be saying to people, I guess at this time of year, take some reflective time, look back at the year and ask yourself, you know, what is falling away in my life? What's not working? You know, where, where am I becoming stagnant? Um, you know, projects, what am I hanging on to? I remember, hanging on to a business um you'll remember because you did you did work with me that time and i remember holding on to this business and and it was sinking um but it was underfunded so it was it was just sinking and um and i was holding on and i was holding on and it was killing me to hold on you know and and people hold on to different things you know relationships to um jobs careers old routines you know things that just they become your daily norm but where is the vitality where's the life where's the energy in the way that you're living your life right now so i would just take some time and look back at the year and ask yourself what's falling away and as we move towards spring which will be coming next the question would be and what's rising so it's it's what's what's rising within me and what's falling away and how can i begin to adapt because we have to become adaptable beings we have to embrace uncertainty we have to really move to really grow we've got to learn to adapt which means letting go trusting in life trusting in the flow of life and letting go what is no longer working because our lives are so precious you know, you're so precious, everyone who's watching this, their lives are so, so precious. And life can be short. And, you know, it's important that we stay vital, we stay energized, we stay inspired. And it's not about jumping from one thing to the next, but if something's really weighing you down, if projects are really not getting off the ground, take the time, review, and ask yourself in this review time, what would be the courageous step that's emerging coming forward for next year? Dawn, thank you very much for your time. Always inspiring to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> Great to talk to you, Neil, as always. As Dawn was talking there, she talked about getting up later in the winter. You know what? I like that. I live in quite a rural area and I've noticed since I've been living here that um, in the winter, I don't want to get up the same. The lights changed. Nothing's kind of urging me to get up. So Dawn's given me permission to lay in. I really love what Dawn was saying about empty spaces in the winter as well, because if you create those empty spaces, in a way, it's like you're leaving room to create magic because we're not trying to cram in more and more and more and more stuff. Will you take the challenge that Dawn's left us with? I'll be taking that challenge and in my video roundup each month, I'll be reporting what I found from it. You can see my findings from this challenge in our challenge roundup video, which is a monthly summary covering all the challenges our experts shared. To get that video and all our latest health and wellness uploads, including interviews and reviews, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified whenever we post. And if this channel can help your friends and family, please share it with them too. Also, if you want to get proactive with your health, Total Wellness Club are developing health quests over at questly.life. Join while we're developing the site and get access to health quests that immediately personalize your health. You'll get to identify which of 10 critical health categories need your attention. You'll be able to track your progress 
and you'll be able to help us develop the platform. I'll put a link in the description below and I'll see you in the next video.